welcome back to Art at Heart. If you're new here, this is a crafting and DIY channel. Today we're going to be stylizing some not so great looking Polaroids to make them look pretty awesome. Let's go ahead and get started. So I actually have a whole stack of Polaroids that just turned out awful. A couple of them were from my photo hack video and they just did not turn out well. So I decided I was going to paint over them with some simple designs and kind of give them a little something special. So I started out with this photo of my hand holding a candle. I did a little cream circle and then outlined that cream circle with some jagged yellow lines to kind of show like a flame type design. Due to the glossiness of the photo, you do have to do a couple of coats, unless you like the halfway painted look, which I kind of did in some of these Polaroids. Uh, next, I'm going to add some red flames into the mix. If you mess up your painting job, the nice thing is if you wipe it off right away, it comes off super easy, guys. Now I'm just adding some red down the side of the hand to fully encapsulate the photo. I'm adding a little yellow outline around the flame and right next to the cream color. Now I'm going in with the gold and adding some dots. I made the mistake of doing the dots and then realizing that I wanted to add black for the background instead of just staying with the plain photo background. So I would highly recommend to do the black portion first and then go on top of the black paint with the gold dots. It's much easier than trying to avoid the already painted gold dots. For this next photo, I essentially wanted to emulate a drawn rose bush. So essentially I took some green and some yellow in certain sections and went in a circular motion to kind of give that bush-like effect. If you have some black or darker spots in your Polaroid, it might require to do a couple coats of paint to fully cover. Since I'm going to be adding quite a few flowers, I wasn't too worried about being able to see some of the black because ultimately the flowers should cover most of that up. I decided to go with the color scheme of red, white, and pink for the flowers. This is supposed to look sort of like a rose bush. Um, here's a fast forward of what it looks like partly done. Essentially you just do like four or five little dots in a circle and make the flower I just kind of did a random pattern of the pink, white, and red. Um, and don't worry about like kind of mixing some of the colors too because petals have uh, multiple tones of colors. Boy, oh boy, am I digging all these super flattering photos of myself. It's great showing the entire world what these look like. Anywho, uh, this is the next photo. I decided to go with a shooting star theme. Um, so I started with a lighter purple and I gradually got darker as I went down the photo using some blues and some darker purples. This one I definitely coated thick because I wanted it to be a very solid purple. Mm -hmm. 
Once the background was dry, I went ahead and add some little stars all over the background. So I have a love for swirls and just a fascination with them. So of course I had to add some lines to my little shooting stars. I did this with a light sky blue. I added some extra little trail lines using some yellow just to tie in the stars a little bit more. This photo by far ended up being my favorite. It ended up having a real Vincent Van Gogh vibe. I am painting the whole background green to be some grassy hills. And I actually did a couple of coats on this one because I was planning on going over top of it with some other paints and it's just easier to paint on top of an already painted surface versus painting on top of the actual photograph. So super unfortunate filming accident. Um, my SD card got full and I didn't notice while I was filming this and so there's gonna be a giant jump. <laughs> uh, so this was the jump. Uh, essentially I'm working on two little green hills. You just go in an upwards direction making little blades of grass don't be afraid to use some blues and darker greens, yellows, etc. You want to have it uh, look very impressionistic. Now to fill in the sky, and of course, we're using sky blue with a mixture of some darker blues just to give it a little bit more, not realism, but that impressionistic vibe. In the right corner, I ended up using some white to make a very, very light blue, just so it had some contrast to the other corner, which tended to be a darker blue. So I had quite a few candle photos, which I don't mind the ones that my face aren't in, so I was happy to paint this one. I decided to go with a very circular pattern, so I'm gonna start out with a red circle around the flame. And I added a red circle around that. I didn't really necessarily have a certain color scheme. I was kind of just going off of different candle colors but I totally go off that later. I start adding in some greens and some purples, and I guess all of those technically can be present in a fire, but when you think about flames, you don't necessarily think, ah, purple. Yes, that's the color of fire. The outer rings I tended to make slightly larger than some of the more inner rings. It's totally up to you if you want to make them the same size. I personally did not, but it's totally up to you. This photo ended up giving me a real hippie vibe by the time I was finished with it. It reminded me a lot of tie-dye. I don't know if it was just the bold colors I chose or how it kind of extends outward. like tie-dye does, but I was pretty happy with the end product, even though we're not there in the video yet. I just don't like talking about it because I think this is pretty self-explanatory and that y'all don't necessarily need um, me to tell you what to do. You can watch and observe and learn. Now add in some green and blue circles, and I'm gonna add a, another red circle at the end.
I feel like this video segment is a lot longer than the rest, but I don't remember painting this photo that much longer than the rest, so I'm not sure why it is so much longer. I'm kind of ranting just to fill up time right now, guys, because <laughs> I'm not really sure what else to say. It's pretty self-explanatory. And of course, I added a black background. Thank goodness we're almost to the end, but look at this photo. Look how fugly I look in this photo. <laughs> I'm not sure what I was thinking on this day. Oh, I look great. My hair is standing up on end. I don't think I need to put any product in this before taking a photo. Anyway, we're covering up all of those hairs with a white background, and we're gonna go from there. <laughs> Since this bad boy had a pretty dark background, we're gonna have to do a couple coats of white to make sure we don't see the Polaroid's actual background. So I was getting a little bored with just painting, so I decided, why not Sharpie? Why not? So once the paint was fully dry, I did some continuous lines over the paint so essentially you aren't supposed to pick up your pen or your pencil i mean clearly you can see me picking it up but you go right back to where you left off and that's the design i decided to go with for this and i'm adding some more blue elements so i colored my shirt blue and then i'm gonna go in with some yellow after i'm done with that to give it more pop via its complementary color So I painted my overalls yellow as well as just adding some little yellow streaks in between my lines. This wasn't super precise. Um, I tried to get in a lot of the white crevices, but I didn't cover up all of the white entirely. And here we're going with another purple background because purple is a fabulous color and why not? Also because it's one of the colors I already had on my paint palette, so I was just like, why waste? <laughs> um, so once again, I did a solid colored background. So I was kind of dumb and used a gel pen for this. I would highly recommend to just use Sharpie or like a thin Sharpie. Do not use pen. I repeat, do not use pen. I ended up kind of ripping the photo and also gel pen takes forever to dry and it kind of just smeared and did not go over well with the paint. So just don't do it guys. Just use Sharpie. Sharpie better. At least for this project. I love drawing with pen and that's kind of why I did it. But uh, yeah, just use Sharpie. And essentially I just did some fun little designs with triangles, circles, lines, kind of whatever your heart feels like doing. For the last and final photo, I decided to go with something very simplistic, stripes. It's nice and easy, not too difficult. I chose a teal and kind of a mossy yellow green color and I think the rest of it's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, I would hope you would know how to do stripes. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give me some thumbs up and leave some comments. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. And until next time, this is Brianna signing off.